Welcome back. Now we all know that the hustle of our lives rarely allows us to visit the old villages most of us grew up in. The old pickle jars on the porch, the metal milk can, the rusty bicycle. They all sound like memories from long time back. Someone who grew up in Kumbakonam and now professionally recreates these memories for all on canvas is Santana Krishna. Now you would think he paints images of how houses in the past used to be. Well, you're not all that technically wrong, but you'll definitely be surprised to see this. Growing up in Kumakonam, Santana Krishnan was always fascinated by the turmeric and kumkum markings on the doors, the thinne and a glimpse of each household behind the doors. After finishing his master's in fine arts, Santana decided to recreate the nostalgia of old households in his paintings. His acrylic painting on canvas beautifully creates a strong tactile feel of the old withered walls. The surface is painted with film posters from the 70s and images of goddesses from Ravi Verma's calendar art. The metal milk can, the tulsi tree, the old house number scribbled on the wall. Everything is poured out on canvas from the memories of his childhood. I started this concept in uh, for my third year UG. I'm st that time I'm studied in Kumakonam. Uh, that time every time uh, you know it's very culture place. That place a uh, lot of streets and a huge uh, big houses are there. So every time I'm passing through the streets and through my college, you know, it's a very huge street out there. Uh, that time morning 9.30 I go, going, that time when sunlight is there, after I'm back to home it's 4.30 evening. So that time uh, houses are, uh, every time people not closing the doors, it's an open door. So you view the, view the all the things, you know, it's uh, landscaping the thing and through the courtyard and backyards and it's some live things are there. This material I use a mixed media and wood and uh, sometimes I use that antique locks also there and mostly my works all are in acrylic only. It's very convenient for me. Uh, it's a quick dry and all the things and this wood door uh, I make it that uh, deal wood, it's a treatment at wood and, uh, and after I use the colors in acrylic it's like an antique uh, feeling all the things. So and sometimes I use that uh, very old glasses also. Uh, it's a, that time is a very typical uh, uh, that blue and green people use that glasses or the, that uh, motive or the flora designs or that thing. Santana's mixed media paintings are a three-dimensional representation of the art. It comprises of one half a real wooden door laced with a heavy uncouth broken lock and the other half a painted canvas stretched on plywood giving a peek into the household. Interesting to note is that although every tiny detail from the disheveled pots to the crows sitting atop the roof have been carefully recreated, none of Santana's household have a human figure in them. Uh, mostly my paintings in, uh, are so off door is open and through the view are in uh, courtyard and backyard all the things and uh, I use mostly I don't use in a human figure mostly you know I, I want to detail the props so you I put here in human figure means it's a concentration fully through that uh, figure so I don't like uh, that that time people every people having a milk can and every people having a bicycle all the things so all the details And like each household has its own story to tell, so does Santana's each painting. In the process of recovering, the craft that has disappeared from use and almost from memory, Santana has carefully preserved the story behind each door. This concept is my new concept, it's a box, a mixed media and a wooden box. And every uh, painting, uh, my paintings begin the stories there. Uh, this is particularly, this is glass, you know, that uh, here in go in a big bazaar, all the things, you know, that shopkeepers are uh, having a, closely the houses are there. So uh, that people go in the afternoon, 1.30 to 4.30, uh, take a sleep after finish, that people finish lunch after they take a sleep. So that time people, very old houses use the white glasses. 
so that people uh, don't like uh, disturb and some inside that uh, no lighting will come no so you take any paper or any calendar or any god's images to stuck the paper on there so inside uh, no uh, sunlight not come there and all the things someone once said art is never what actually meets the eye it is amazing how much research santana has to invest in his paintings so that he is able to recreate the minute test of details moving on to a different kind of art sculptures i have to honestly admit that i was fascinated by what i saw in the next story i won't reveal all of it for you i'll just take you to sarla arts gallery where sculptor nanda gopal had his works on display Sarla Art Gallery proudly presented Nanda Gopal's works on display. The figurines mostly made out of copper, brass and scrap metal were the creation of sculptor Nanda Gopal. Nanda Gopal, who is an acclaimed sculptor and has designed for reputed names, interestingly started his career in physics. I did a course in uh, a degree in physics. I I was at the Loyola College and I was good in mathematics and I thought I would um, which was the thing at that time to be an engineer or a doctor things of course have changed a lot today uh, uh, there are so many more options for for people to take up but at that time it was just either being a doctor or an engineer and um, I thought I would uh, go in for engineering as I told you I was good at mathematics Uh, but by the time i came to the end of the third year i realized that my interest lay elsewhere and i joined the college of art um and i joined as a painter and by the time i was in the second year um, i won the national award and that sort of convinced me that my uh, forte lay in sculpture and not in painting The tinge of physics is present in each of his creations. Every sculpture is born as a rough sketch on the paper. Then the various elements like copper, brass, even old ladles and construction rods are brought together to form the structure. Mine is not junk sculpture. I have a concept, I have a drawing and these found objects go in to make part of it like for example i have a uh, a sieve here uh, when i when i uh, when i cast it from the steel onto brass the holes get filled up so they form a certain pattern which is uh, very interesting you know it, it, the texture is so beautiful similarly i used a pulley wheel uh, so they all go as part of the uh, uh, to make the sculpture and it's very interesting when you found when you find i sometimes use a ladle i use a, a spoon uh, when they mix into the sculpture without without being i mean they should stand out as a spoon or as a wheel it should be as part of the sculpture then it becomes very powerful the most noticeable factor of nand gopal's creation is the life forms in it Each sculpture is a frontal layered artwork as opposed to a three dimensional structure and always has a conspicuous human or animal form as a subject. Uh, a lot of people ask me why I do figurative sculpture instead of abstract sculpture. Um I think the plain simple fact is um when you make a, a sculpture of a, a human being a lot of people can immediately recognize it as themselves and then they say either the nose is too long or the uh, forehead is too big because they can see themselves in it so it's far more difficult uh, uh, i mean uh, pe people are much more critical of a, a, a figurative sculpture than this because they see themselves in it and i feel at the end uh, man is man's greatest subject so 
Naturally, I, I always tended to be a figurative sculptor, not an abstract one. The world over, it is accepted that sculptures are much more expensive medium than painting. Uh, just to give the logistics, uh, to pack 10 paintings and send to a show, it would just require one crate. But to pack 10 sculptures would require 10 crates and the additional uh, difficulty of packing also the, the pedestals. So basically it's a very expensive proposition to have a sculpture show and that is why a lot of galleries uh, shy away from sculpture shows uh, because there's so much money involved in it. I couldn't help noticing one sheer similarity between the two artists. Although completely different backgrounds and different specializations of art, they both are strongly connected to the place they grew up in. While Santana goes down the memory lane to picture the perfect disheveled earthen pot, Nanda Gopal goes back to his village to collect ladles made of bell metal to use in his creations. Taking a turn towards the memory lanes, you know what's coming up next. Memories of Madras.